What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Aquaman 2. The, the Lost Kingdom? Why do you always got to add in the extra piece to the title? Why can't you just be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9, and 10? The Lost Kingdom, this thing. Just 2, 3, 7. Why you got to add some extra, man? The Lost Kingdom, man. Aquaman 2, we knew a sequel was coming. The first Aquaman did well, you know what I'm saying? Jason Momoa as Aquaman is a good time. Like, I like the fact that he looks like the sea. An island person, like a person of the, the sea. Like, you know, I think he's a great fit for Aquaman. And the first one, I remember the first one being a, a pretty good time. I remember enjoying it. There were some dope scenes. I remember action sequence outside of the water that was really dope to me when they were running on the rooftops and stuff like that. Now there's some controversy about Aquaman 2 because of Amber Heard being in the film. Now a lot of people are like, why she's still in the film then, man? We standing firm 10 tones down. She shouldn't be in the film no more. And so she's still in there, but you can tell they tremendously cut her role down. She was just like, hey guys. And she holding the baby, what you want for dinner? Quietly on the side. She's been relegated to just like the the girlfriend kinda. And she's like, she was a major character in the first one. So watching it, you can tell she was tremendously minimized in this. Like she does have a couple like action sequences, but nothing compared to what she was doing in the first one. So you can tell like that effect. And I'm sure that's tough on the production end of it. Like. Man, with all this going on, we gotta do reshoots, we gotta do cut downs, we gotta edit, we gotta do this, we gotta change the script. And they all, that's nothing new with motion pictures, but it, you can tell, they was like, oh, we gotta scramble, we gotta, we gotta cut the part now, we gotta get the, just, Amber, can you just, well, what happened to this part? You know why we cut all that out. And so it's just like, man, you can tell. This story involves Stingray, I mean, not Stingray, excuse me, Black Manta wants that revenge. You know, he was kind of relegated to like a, kind of like a side villain in the first one. But he has a vendetta against Aquaman. Like, yo, man, you killed my dad. So I need you to, I need, I need my lick back. I need you to feel this. And so he's down there looking for any type of, you know, leg up he can get in the game, in the undersea game. Now, mind you, Atlantis is still like unknown to society at large. So they still like low key and Aquaman is the new king of Atlantis. So he's just, he's just trying to be a dad, trying to be a, a, a husband, a son, and also do this, this new job position. Cause he sees it as a job. Like he never really wanted. He was just like, yeah, I'll do it. But you know, I don't really want this job but I'm making it work, balancing, you know, trying to do all that. And so that's where we end up in this movie. Black Manta finds this, uh, scepter that has that gives him you know special powers and and so he finds this like lost kingdom down there where he finds this scepter so now he's got a leg up in the game he can fix his costume he can you know where did they get the money though where are they getting the money for these undersea vessels to be able to withstand the pressures of the ocean and just be down there as regular humans i get the atlanteans like they they're literally, the physiological setup is built for them to be swimming down there and existing and talking and having meetings. How you having meetings underwater just talking regular? Like, you know, I've been in the swimming pool. I'd be like, bruh, 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 bruh. Ain't, no, ain't no bubbles coming up, me and Sins. What? And it's going up. Like, the words you're saying is going up to the surface. Like, how are you just in down in the ocean chilling? So y'all mean to tell me? We gotta do this for the, nah, man. Nah, we staying hidden. Like, y'all just talking regular. Like, water isn't between you and the other person. I can see you talking close. You're like, I wanted to see the So basically, you know, they end up in a situation where Atlantis is in peril. There's some, some like climate shift on the surface world. And once this, this lost kingdom is awakened, like, you know, all shit hits the fan and Aquaman is like, yo, I mean, we can reveal ourselves to the humans and, and help them out. We got we got some of the technology and some of the capabilities here to help the surface world, but they like, nah, man, we ain't we ain't a part of that, man. We down here, let's stay down here. So he 
he's at odds with the council, you know, the council. And so this situation happens and Aquaman needs some help. So he go he goes to recruit his brother from the first film that they had there in prison because he was doing too much. He has to recruit the help of his brother, played by Patrick Wilson. And so he has to bust him out of jail, low key, without other people knowing that it was Aquaman that busted him out of jail. So you gotta do the covert escape plan, you know, type of situation. They gotta join forces to be Black Manta and his crew before they just wreak havoc and, and unleash this thing on the surface world that mutates, you know, uh, creatures. So now you got giant rodents and giant insects and all kind of giant fauna that eats said insects and other stuff. So that could be scary. Like, oh, everything's giant now? We got giant grasshoppers after? So, and mind you, uh, Nicole Kidman is back. Small, minuscule role. I'm like, that's Nicole Kidman, man. She won an Oscar, been nominated for 17. She been AMC theaters talking about other oh, movies. And I feel like she was just in this on the side as well. Damn near feel like she got Amber Heard as well. Jason Momoa is a good time. Like, he... He always seems like he's having fun whatever he's in. And Aquaman is like a fun guy. And the dynamic between him and Patrick Wilson is, is pretty much entertaining. It's like, yo, I don't like you. I don't like you either, but let's work together. So that dynamic was pretty cool to see. Black Manta, he's just an angry villain. Cardboard cut out angry villain. I'm mad at you. I want to kill Aquaman. No other real like personality on it. I'm mad, I'm gonna get my revenge, I'm gonna kill your family, give me your kids. I got to make the sacrifice, give me your kids, but I'm angry, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get the weaponry to kill you. So it's just like, okay. But there was no, there was no, no extra meat on the, on the bone. He was just an angry villain. And I feel like, I wanted more, man. I want more for my villains. And for me in comic book movies, the villains are very important. Are you gonna be a, a, a cardboard cutout? Are you gonna be cut and dry? I just wanna do this, no personality. Ah, that's where you lose me. You get ding, mad saxophones if you're not a compelling villain. That's the, that's the problem we got into is it's like, I like the dynamic between Aquaman and his brother. And that was, that was very crucial to the entertainment piece of it. But other than that, like the fight with, you know, Black Manta, I was just like, all right, you know what I'm saying, that's whatever. So the action the action sequences never really excited me. I wasn't on the edge of my seat. I was just watching it. And then like Cam said behind the cam, he was like, Born to be Wild. How many times we gonna play this song? We get it, you trying to make Born to be Wild the theme song for Aquaman, but we've heard Born to be Wild 50, 11, 800 million times in other movies, so it's just like, couldn't, couldn't y'all cook up an original piece for Aquaman? Or just play it once. We know he's wild. His hair is long. He be doing this. He's a good time. Tongue out. But boy, to be wild, how many times we playing it? We know he wild. He Aquaman. You know, he's a free spirit. <laughs> boy, to be wild. Born to be wild. All right. All right, man. Anyway, man, forget all that. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Aquaman 2. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving Aquaman 2 two and a half saxophones out of five. Like I said, I like Jason Momoa as Aquaman, and I like the dynamic between him and his brother, and that's the strongest element of this movie. But other than that, it was just, I was just looking at stuff. I, I, there was no, there was no urgency. There was no... You know what I mean? It was, and the and the villain's vendetta it was just too simple. And if you're gonna have a simple vendetta like revenge, because revenge is always a good time for a plot device. But if you're gonna have a simple vendetta, you gotta make the villain juicier. And his personality and, and the way that he moves, whatever whatever that may be, you gotta make the villain juicier if you're just gonna have a basic revenge storyline for him. At least make his personality pop. Just a boring, I'ma get my revenge. What else you gonna do? Huh? That's it, just revenge. Bye. All right, y'all, that's my review of Aquaman 2. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comments section below, man. Um, and also, when it comes to DC, DC is on the struggle. I want to know, outside of the, the Christopher Nolan Batmans, outside of that, 
I want to know your your top five. You know, I'm going to do top three because I feel like they don't have that many. What are your top three DCEU movies? What's your top three, man? Let me know. I'm curious to know what are your favorite three. I know you're going to have probably the Zack Snyder 18-hour Justice League in there. You probably have Wonder Woman in there. And you might, you might have the first Aquaman in there. But let me know. I want to know your top three. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.